In March of 2022, about 8 months ago, I finally started flying again after over 2 years. Since then, I've been filming the flights, scoring them based on my experience, and uploading them to YouTube. As of now, I've reviewed more carriers than I would have expected, and I'm booked on more flights for late 2022 and early 2023, which I'll also be filming. For the moment, I don't have any new ones to upload, so I decided to make this video comparing the Boeing 737NG products between American Airlines and United. I've reviewed both of these airlines a few times, maybe you saw some of my videos, but for today's comparison, I selected AA2847 New York LaGuardia to Dallas and UA-1505 Bozeman Yellowstone to Denver to be the focuses. Occasionally, I might bring up other flights I've taken with the airlines to make the comparison as accurate as possible, especially since flight 1505 was only an hour and a half long, while it was three hours for flight 2847. I have another American Airlines video on the channel with a more similar flight time to the United one, but it was operated by Republic Airways. Also, both of these are the 737-800, so at least we'll be comparing the same aircraft type. Let's get started. Hello from New York City. Oh, and also from Bozeman, Montana. Let's go fly on some 737s. Welcome aboard. First thing we'll be scoring today is the seat comfort. It was hard to decide which carrier is winning this because the seats aren't really that different in terms of legroom and width. Both seats would be okay for me on a 1-2 to two hour flight, definitely wasn't fun sitting in the American Airlines seat for that 3 hour flight, but I think that this point should go to United. Their 737 interiors are inconsistent, but I've sat in two different ones, and there's generally more padding on those than the Oasis seats on American Airlines. Both do have adjustable headrests though, which is something that US carriers generally do better with than European ones. So I'll be giving United one point, because their seats are generally more comfortable than AAs, but not by much. Next we'll be scoring amenities, which will include things like seat pocket contents and other convenient things offered to passengers. As you can see, United's got an in-flight magazine and a safety card, which is what I'd expect to be the bare minimum. Additionally, the cabin crew handed out sanitizing wipes to all passengers, and this was the case on every United flight I've taken this year. But all American Airlines has is a safety card and something with info on their in-flight entertainment, more on that later. And I didn't get a sanitizing wipe on any of the three American Airlines flights I've taken this year. Seems to me that the only thing AA has that UA does not in terms of amenities is the spill-in phone holder and a cup grove on the tray table. So, United is going to win another point just because I think that the fact that they have an in-flight magazine and offer cleaning wipes outweighs the lack of a cup grove and a device holder. Now it's time to leave the departure cities so we can score some more stuff. Now we'll be scoring the in-flight entertainment. On short and medium haul flights, I'd normally group that with the amenities, but because both of these carriers have it on flights like that, I'll score it separately. If you saw the seatback entertainment screens in my clips of the United 737, you're probably thinking that this is a no-brainer and that United's gonna win. I mean, United has a flight map on these screens and quite a few TV channels, but I can tell that they're super outdated. Also, not every United 737NG has them. So, the winner for the in-flight entertainment score will mostly come down to what they have for free via personal device. Yes, both American and United have a wide selection of free movies and TV shows accessed through their Wi-Fi network. And don't get me wrong, United's selection on board the 737 is great for the routes the aircraft normally performs, but when you take a look at Americans, it becomes pretty clear which one is winning. You can put me on the 18-hour journey from New York to Singapore with the selection of content and I'd be happy. And all this was available on not only the 3 hour 737 flight, but also the 55 minute American Eagle flight I took from Norfolk to LaGuardia. So, American will be getting this point. However, I'm gonna say this again, I am still not happy about American Airlines removing the personal screens in Project Oasis. If they had kept them, I might have given them two points for this. 
but it is what it is, and I'm still impressed with the selection they have for personal device, especially since it's all on even 55 minute flights. Now we'll be seeing what these carriers offer on board for snacks and drinks. On United, all I got was a cup of water. Pretty disappointing because I thought they served Stroopwafels on United Short Haul, but I guess I was wrong. This was all they had, not even a choice of drinks. Whereas on American, I was given a choice of drinks, I chose apple juice, and you guessed it, a small pretzel snack. I used to think that a snack and a drink choice was the bare minimum, but this is heck of a lot better than what I got on United. And before you come at me in the comments about this flight being about 2 hours longer than the United flight, I got the exact same thing on the 55 minute flight from Norfolk. And to top that off, the cabin crew came around twice on my third American flight on that trip, which I unfortunately did not record. So yeah, I think it's fair to say that United's gotta take the L on this one. I'm giving two points to American because their service was like three times as good as United's. Also, while we are landing, I'm going to score the onboard crew. I'm going to be honest here, I never noticed many differences between the general attitude of the cabin crew on both carriers. They both have a good attitude towards passengers and get their jobs done. Personally, I've never encountered any problems with the cabin crew on both American and United, so there will be a tie for staff, which means no points for either of them. Welcome to Denver and welcome to Dallas. The results are 3-2, to two, which means American Airlines is the winner, but not by much. Both are okay carriers with good inflate entertainment and mediocre seats. Please remember that this comparison is for short or medium haul only, and be aware that it might be different depending on the aircraft type. But American and United use the 737-800 a lot, so I hope this is helpful. I am booked for next year on an American Airlines long haul flight, and I'd be happy to make a long haul comparison in the future. Let me know in the comments if you agree with me on this, or if your experience on these carriers was any different from mine. I'd be happy to hear it.